Aloha and welcome to Your Heart Magic, an illuminating space where psychology, spirituality and heart wisdom meet. Here's your host, Dr. Beth Ann Kapansky Wright, the clinical psychologist with a mystic mind. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to Your Heart Magic. This is Dr. Beth Ann Kapansky Wright. And today we have an energy update for the month of October. So we are looking at what the Akashic Records have to say about the energy, what is happening with the moons, and any other insights that want to make themselves known and be shared on the podcast today. So with that, let's dive in. What I love about October in this particular episode is Your Heart Magic episodes come out every Thursday. So this is coming out right Right in the energy of the new moon eclipse that just happened on the second. It was an eclipse that happened in the sign of Libra, and we are in the thick of the energy of transformation. Eclipse season always marks a time of change and contemplation, sifting things, shaking things up. Sometimes eclipse energies can be really intense and be experienced as disruptive. But one of the ways that I really like to think about eclipse energy is that ultimately for any of us, as we are walking our path and we are working on our self-growth and our authenticity and our heart magic and inner being and all the things that feel like they represent the themes on our soul path, I always think that eclipse season is like having a big glass of water. And at first the water might look clear, but if you were to shake it up, you would see all these little tiny particles or little pollutants in it and things that need to be filtered out. And so when we do that sifting process and that filtering process and we're forced to shake it up and see what is keeping the water from being even more clear, what's muddying its streams, and we take the time to examine it and find out what needs to happen to remove it or release it, then ultimately that glass of water becomes more distilled. And I think that that is a beautiful picture for how I think about eclipse energy is that sometimes it feels like things are really being shaken up and we experience these disruptions and big change can happen. Sometimes unexpected events happen, but ultimately if we take whatever it is and use it to sift through our internal waters and work through the themes coming up, and do the work of contemplation, introspection, journaling, whatever that is for us, we're able to release another layer of residue. And then we feel less sticky. We feel less muddy. We move through it with less attachment and more clarity, more self-awareness and self-knowledge. And that allows us to continue to access our intuition and our heart magic and really distinguish our inner voice from our mental chatter and the voices um, that might be around us and what other people have to say. It allows us to come into that space of soul wisdom and listening to ourselves and staying in heart coherence and integrity that much more effectively. So that is how I think about any eclipse season. And that's the energy that we're in as we step into the month of October. The Akashic Records called this month Terra Firma meaning solid ground, firm ground, standing on a solid piece of land. And the energy from the Akashic's point of view this month is all about having gone through some sort of big leap, big quantum up-leveling energy. And each of us arrives in October and we find our feet underneath us and that we are standing in a newfound space. And as I was opening the records for the month of October, I had this really beautiful image come through. It's from a movie called Gravity that has Sandra Bullock and George Clooney in it. It came out back in, I think, about 2013. And in the movie, after spending all this time in space, there's this really powerful ending scene where she returns to Earth and she's in this capsule and it's hurtling down through the different layers of the atmosphere 
as she goes back to earth and finishes this journey. And the whole movie is deeply symbolic and metaphorical and really echoes this internal journey the character has of psychologically being invited to examine and learn to let go. Letting go is actually a big theme of the movie. And in the end, she hits the water in her little pod and is able to get out and opens it up. And she is in the water and begins to take these shaky steps onto new ground. But her feet are underneath her. Like she falters a little bit at first, but then she's solidly walking and standing on new land. And again, there's that symbolism of being on terra firma, of having traveled from the cosmos back to the earth. And she's gone through this huge internal change inside of her. And so she's now moving forward in her life in a new space. And that was what the records open with for the month of October. And it was the metaphor given to us to understand how we might see our journey at this point in time, that something has happened in our individual past that represents going through a journey and having some sort of big change energy. And for some of us, that might be external where you've literally done a lot of external change or something big has happened. And for others, it might be internal where it just feels like a huge shift that has taken place inside of you. Most likely, it might be a little bit of both since our inner world often echoes what's happening in the outer world and vice versa. And here we have arrived on new ground. And so we might feel a little bit shaky at first, but we are definitely in a new space. And as the month unfolds, we start to see this newfound sense of confidence and self-belief and ability to step more strongly and to believe in ourselves. That is October's energy from the focal point of the Akashic Records. And it is a metaphor and symbolism and energy that we can come back to even as things continue to happen around us. And the Akashic really showed this idea that right now, collectively, there's just so much going on all the time. We are so inundated with information and things shifting and happening in the world around us and things shifting and happening technologically that bring us this information at a absolute like rapid fire pace. And anytime we get really tuned in or caught up with that, we probably will feel a little bit fragmented, a little bit uncertain, a little bit uh, inundated with different energy. But when we can bring it back to our heart and bring it back to ourself and really bring it back to our space of here's the things I can control, like what's going on inside of me and my heart and my thoughts and how I'm interacting with all of this, we bring it back to a space of solid ground. And the Akashic used the word up-leveling, which is kind of a fun word. It's used in coaching circles and wellness packages a lot is sort of this marketing. Are you ready to up-level your life? But I love that they said like you've up-leveled. You may or may not even see it. Up-leveling your life isn't always about doing some package and taking these steps. A lot of times up-leveling is really gritty and glamorous work. And it is that clearing of residue and working through the things inside of us that bring us to these points of conflict and tension and um, doing our shadow work and all of that. And as we clear that, our water becomes more distilled. And that's the process of, of up-leveling, of tuning into higher frequencies, of being able to work with our heart more effectively, and our heart being a portal to our relationship with the divine and our spiritual connection and listening to our intuition. So you have up-leveled, even if you are working on up-leveling in some other area area and you're doing that consciously, know that you've done a lot of that work and some things have shifted. And so here you are after your quantum leap, what will you discover? And the message from the Akashic is part of what you will discover this month is this increased sense of self-efficacy and belief. You might find that things that once felt really hard for you begin to feel easier, that you have experiences that feel like mastery experiences or something that would have really stressed you out or been that much more difficult several months ago, and now you sail through it, or maybe you grit your teeth 
and think, oh, this is going to be really tough based on your past experience. And then you realize after you've made it through that that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And you have this reflection point to see where you've grown in skills and talents and gifts and the energy that you bring to the equation. There's also encouragement this month to try out new things. And the focus this month isn't necessarily about success or having to do it a certain way. It's more about the courage to try and seeing the increased self-confidence that can come from having an expanded sense of our own efficacy and competency and skill set. And that gives us the courage to sign up for something new or take a class or learn something new. Maybe it gives you the courage to go back into something that you left behind or something older and try again or see what happens this next time around. So whatever that thing or those things are for you, the emphasis is on confidence, courage, self-belief, and striding forward more confidently, and of course, having fun with it. And then the final thing that the Akashic Records had to share with us this month was this beautiful goodwill message to any of us who maybe access that wisdom. If you're listening to the podcast, if you sign up for Akashic Magic, that is my monthly newsletter where I share more in-depth information about the energy for the month ahead from the records. Like if you're tuning into any of that, even if you just happen to find this and you are doing your own spiritual work, if you consider yourself any form of a light worker, healer, spiritually minded, then know that there is this goodwill message for you of acknowledgement of, do you see how much you've grown? And that sometimes it's hard to measure our own growth. It's not like we get a report card from spirit that says like, here's your progress report. And like, look, you've improved here. And, you know, you were getting a an average C grade in this, and now you've boosted it up to a 95%. A lot of times we evaluate those things based on our own sense of self and maybe what we see going on around us. But sometimes what's going on around us is a little bit tricky. Things that look like they're not going in our favor don't always mean that we're not growing or doing the work. Sometimes they just mean life is happening. So that's not always the most subjective criteria. And the Akasha kind of had this idea that like a monkey on your back where you can't see it. There's been so much growth for those who are tuning into this and so much growth in inner strength. And again, that idea of distilling the energy inside of you and distilling that water to bring it to a place of feeling more strong, more creative, more courageous, whatever adjective and superlative you want to put in there. The Akashic had this like well done kind of big giant wave around a stadium for the work that each of us has been doing. So that was really lovely. We already talked about the new moon and that already happened. It was in Libra. Just a little recap. New moons are always a beautiful time to think about intentions, beginnings. What are we planting in our life? I love with new moon energies when they happen at the beginning of a month to tie that into what do I want to grow in the month ahead? What do I want to grow in the last three months of this year of 2024, the calendar year? So that was the energy. Libra is very focused on themes of relationship, balance, harmony, exchanges, equitable exchanges, and beauty, justice, truth, and fairness. So anything that ties into those themes might be coming up for you and might be something that you've been working with. And then as the month progresses, we have a full moon happening on happening on October 17th. That is called the Hunter's Moon, according to the Farmer's Almanac, and it is happening in the sign of Aries. And Aries and the Zodiac is all about initiative. It's about I, the self, I am, and really asking us questions about life purpose and mission and what steps are we taking right now to align with that. So this is an excellent full moon to revisit your sense of purpose, your mission statement. If you don't have a mission statement for life, that's okay. It could be a really fun ritual to write a mission statement for 
whether it's a bigger picture or just like, what's my mission statement in life right now? What am I working on? What am I about? How am I directing my energies? That might be a really fun and delightful way to work with this moon and to see as well, what abundance have you manifested in the last cycle? What have you completed? What are you ready to release to the moon that you don't wish to carry forward into the following moon cycle? What are you ready to give to grandmother moon and to say, take this from me. I'm ready to shed it. I have been carrying it around. It is growing heavy or tired. I'm ready to let it go. And if I can't entirely let it go, then I invite you to take a layer off so I can travel a little bit more lightly. What are you letting go of and how can you celebrate that release? Aries is a fire sign. So anything that you can do to work with fire, lighting a candle, lighting incense, any kind of creative light energy might feel really fun for that full moon. And then we move into Scorpio season on October 23rd. Third, Scorpio is intriguing energy. It is the energy of the zodiac that asks us to take things a little bit more deeply. Scorpio is about depth psychology and penetration and looking below the surface, searching for things that are hidden. Scorpio asks us to unearth hidden talents, hidden motives, hidden energies, things that we might be hiding from ourselves. It invites us not to take something at surface level, but to really burrow down into it and investigate what's underneath it. It is a water energy sign. And like all water energy, it is fluid, changeful. It can be really intense. It can look gentle and then switch to a greater intensity. So Scorpio is this intriguing, complex energy and I really like to think of Scorpio as having a bit of a psychologist in it as a sign and inviting us to be the therapist, the psychologist, the philosopher, the depth thinker in our own life and just explore what lies below the surface and to stay open to looking at what might be hidden and finding those hidden lights and hidden gems of knowledge and awareness and a situation. It invites us to not make a snap judgment, but to ultimately stay open and allow information to come in. And then I did something fun this month. I actually pulled a card and asked the question, what is the energy of the month overall? What message do you have for anybody who might listen to this podcast? And the card that I pulled is from the Angels and Ancestors or Oracle Cards Guidebook. It is by Kyle Gray. This is a lovely card deck. I've had it for quite a few years. I always enjoy working with it. And I got Air Guardian. And the message for Air Guardian is shift your perception. And it's the invitation that we can change our lives by changing our perception, by seeing things differently, and that the way that we see things differently is by examining our thoughts doing our inner work, allowing ourselves to challenge our thoughts, even when it's uncomfortable, going through that process of not knowing what we don't know and not needing to figure it out right away and inviting in our spiritual connection, our higher self, our wiser self, our intuition, and asking that we be supported and creating a new architecture to support healthier, more constructive ways of thinking. So a lot of times on a practical level, when I get any message around shifting my perception, I will start with, well, where am I blocked? What do I need to shift? What's no longer working for me? And I'll be investigative about how I am looking at a situation and be really open. Maybe there's something in here that I'm bringing to the equation that could be changed. And then my next question is, okay, well, if these thoughts aren't really working for me, what's the new way of thinking? And there is a bit of a nebulous space there where, again, we don't know what we don't know. And so we invite in, help me see wisdom from a new perspective. And then we go about being investigative and how could I see this differently? So this is a month that invites us to not only look at our lives differently, but to look at ourselves differently and bringing it back to that message from the Akashic to see ourselves through a lens of expansion. And really looking at where have we grown, 
Where have we developed more efficacy, competency, skills? Where do we have increased self-belief? And how can we feel inspired to move forward with more confidence and alignment? With that, that wraps up our October message. I will be back next week. We have a talk story time episode where I will be sharing some passages from my books and some thoughts and inspirations and ideas behind those. In the meantime, have an amazing week. Happy October to everybody. And as always, be well, be love, be you, and be magic. You've been listening to Your Heart Magic with Dr. Bethann Kapansky Wright. Tune in next week for a new episode to support and empower your light.